This is a patient with an extremely dense coal black hand motion cataract referred in for cataract surgery. She's 95 years old and um, the other eye has uh, an anterior chamber lens uh, with uh, glaucoma after cataract surgery. Um, here we're using Vision Blue to stain the anterior capsule uh, under air. Uh, this will be displaced with dispersive viscoelastic uh, and a soft shell technique. Putting cohesive viscoelastic centrally uh, is then done. Um, a capsular axis is begun using a cystotome uh, to start the uh, tear. And then a utrata forceps is used to uh, complete the tear in a circular fashion. Um, I tried to make this uh, capsular axis appropriate size so that I would not have difficulty getting the cataract out, but also uh, small enough for optic capture of the lens if needed. Hydrodissection of the nucleus is carried out, but it's done very minimally uh, as it's really not necessary and I don't want to blow out the posterior capsule. Here I'm going to use reverse slope sculpting technique with a 2.2 uh, millimeter uh, purple tip uh, needle. Uh, this is a fresh needle. Uh, this is a Bausch & Lohm Stellaris machine. Um, I have the power uh, on ultrasound here set all the way at 100% and uh, I'm not flooring the pedal, I'm just feathering the pedal and I'm going to do a deep, fairly wide central groove as far down as I feel comfortable going, always sculpting against the lens so I'm sculpting uphill against the bulk of the lens by constantly rotating rather than uh, following the downhill path into the posterior capsule. Um, by rotating the lens, uh, I can then sculpt into uh, a denser part of the lens. Um, normally, I like to chop these uh, cataracts uh, from the get-go, but uh, when I'm doing a really dense uh, cataract like this, I like to create a deep, wide central groove so I can get down to the posterior plate and then split right through it uh, so I get less of a jigsaw effect. Um, here, I'm continuing the deep, wide central groove and uh, when I get to where I feel I'm deep enough, I'm going to reach down into the base of the groove and split the lens from the uh, bottom up. I feel it's very important to achieve a crack that uh, goes through the posterior plate here. And here you can see I keep pushing till I achieve that. And uh, now that this is achieved, uh, I'll rotate the lens a bit and tear off the uh, first uh, piece of uh, nucleus using a chopping technique. Here I'm using a simple Sinsky hook as it gives me very good control and I can reach in and just tear off a piece, uh, just a small piece to get things going. Uh, this is a very um, tenacious and thick uh, leathery uh, lens and it doesn't really uh, crack that easily so I kind of have to tear these pieces off piece by piece using fairly high suction and holding the uh, rest of the lens back with the Sinsky hook as I tear with this uh, Faco needle. Here again I'm going to tear off a piece and I'm going to hold the nucleus back and pull off a little piece and uh, Faco that and gradually I'll keep working with this until I get to where I'm a little bit more comfortable uh, that um, things are going to be going uh, my way. Um, the nice thing by creating a deep wide central groove is that I have more room to work and I can keep things away from the cornea endothelium. I can also see what I'm doing. I can see the red reflex. Here I'm tearing off another piece. And again, this is a very leathery uh, lens. Uh, pieces don't really uh, crack off. They have to be kind of torn off bit by bit. There's a real tendency for these pieces to want to adhere to each other posteriorly where the posterior plate is, uh, even though it's been cracked. And so you just have to tear these uh, pieces off um, using this uh, technique. At this point, I'm going to stop and add more dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea. I'm going to do this a few times during this uh, procedure.
this is the last uh, piece of the first half of the lens and um, I have plenty of room to work with in the capsule bag. I'm not really putting any stress on the zonules here. And I have a dispersive viscoelastic protecting the cornea endothelium. So I'm in a pretty safe zone working where I am. And I'm trying to keep an eye out also for any loose chips or pieces to make sure they don't sneak under the iris and get left behind. Now I'm down to half the lens. Again, I'm going to add more dispersive viscoelastic to push the poster capsule back and to protect the cornea. We'll now crack this uh, half into uh, another half and tear that quadrant off. And again, you can see how uh, leathery things are here. It's uh, really a lot of work, but um, this is a very safe way, I believe, of handling these dense nuclei. I sometimes like to turn the phaco tip and angle it a bit so that the uh, phaco energy is direct a little bit more posteriorly as I am here. You can see that the uh, tip has the bevel down at this point. And I've done this a few times during the procedure without calling attention to it. Here again, more viscoelastic is being placed to protect the cornea endothelium. And the uh, final uh, quadrant of this uh, rather uh, impressive nucleus will be removed. I think it's very important to keep your eye out for any loose fragments or chips here to make sure they're not left behind. That's uh, really something that's pretty easy to do in a blue eye with uh, this kind of a dense nucleus. Now we'll uh, do uh, the irrigation and aspiration of the cortex. Um, I'm using a uh, handpiece with a silicone sleeve that gives very nice chamber maintenance here. Uh, this is uh, fairly routine at this point, but there is a bit of tenacious uh, central uh, cortical plaque that's adherent to the posterior capsule. And um, I'm going to try to um, irrigate this off the posterior capsule a bit to loosen it up. And then I'll go back and try to peel it off with irrigation and aspiration handpiece. But uh, when I do this, I find that I'm putting a little bit more tension on the poster capsule than I would like to. And I am a little bit concerned that um, I might tear the poster capsule if I get too aggressive uh, pulling on this. So I give a few attempts at uh, peeling this off. And uh, when I see that it's not going to be successful um, without putting unnecessary stress on the capsule, I'm going to put the viscoelastic in place and get the lens in there uh, before I do anything that I'll regret. So the lens is uh, placed in the capsule bag, rotated into position. And now with the lens in the capsule bag, I'm going to uh, use the... Um, uh, anterior capsule uh, sweep uh, to clean some lens epithelial cells on each side. And then I'll inject some uh, viscoelastic under the lens to lift it up away from the poster capsule. And now I can uh, peel this uh, plaque off the poster capsule using a utrata forceps with the confidence that the lens is already in the eye, and if I inadvertently tear the poster capsule, it's uh, you know not the end of the world. So this is uh, successfully completed now, uh, without uh, tearing the capsule. Um, 
I'll now remove the uh, residual viscoelastic. A limbal relaxing incision will then be carried out. This patient is uh, 95, so we don't want to be too aggressive with this uh, LRI, which we're only correcting about three-quarters of a diopter with, and the uh, case is completed.